Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we've got something really exciting for you. We've tested OpenAI's ChatGPT for investing and compared it to our very own deep learning model ensemble, which features 27 intrinsic value metrics and a mixture of experts layer. We'll dive into the benefits of generative AI, RLHF, and share our experiment surprising results. So grab a snack and let's jump right in. The magic of generative AI in finance. Generative AI is changing the game for financial analysis. With its ability to understand complex patterns and generate human-like text, just the other day we saw a few Twitter threads on using GPT for investing. But the real question is, how does it stack up numerically, say, against our in-house deep learning model ensemble that features 27 intrinsic value metrics and a dynamic mixture of experts approach? Uncovering the Secrets of RLHF we did a deep dive into the literature on reinforcement learning from human feedback, or RLHF for short. There's an amazing 2020 NeurIPS article, Learning to Summarize from Human Feedback, cited by the ChatGPT blog post that you just can't miss. While there are great videos out there explaining RLHF, we noticed that they overlook a few essential points. RLHF teaches a computer system known as the agent how to make better decisions in various situations. The main idea is to guide the agent by providing feedback on its actions, so it learns from experience and gradually improves its performance. To explain RLHF, we can break it down into two main components, the reward model loop and the PPO optimization. Reward model loop. The approach from OpenAI uses a helper model the reward model, RM, to select between a generated output and human text. The loop can be broken into steps like so. A. Collect data. The language model generates responses to a variety of input prompts or questions. B. Rate the data. Human experts review the generated responses and human responses and rate them based on their quality, relevance, and other factors. C. Train reward model. Using the expert ratings, a reward model is trained to help the language model understand which responses are more desirable. The reward model calculates a numerical value, which is the reward given to the reinforcement learning model. PPO optimization. Proximal policy optimization, or PPO, is used to fine tune the model's response generation process. The goal is to help the model generate responses that result in higher rewards, meaning better ratings from human experts, while avoiding sudden changes in its behavior that could cause instability or other undesirable effects. In PPO, we fine-tune the language model to generate better responses. The model takes a prompt and returns a sequence of text, and its main goal is to maximize the reward function, which measures how good the generated responses are. Part 1. Problem Formulation the language model generates text in response to input prompts. It has a vast action space consisting of all possible words or tokens and an observation space that includes various input sequences. The reward function combines the reward model and a constraint on policy shift to guide the model's improvement. Part 2. Implement the reward. For a given input prompt, two texts are generated one by the initial language model and the other by the current iteration of the fine-tuned model. The reward model evaluates the text from the current policy and the difference between the two texts is calculated using a penalty like the KL divergence. The final reward, part three, update the model. The PPO algorithm is used to optimize the language model's parameters, maximizing the reward metrics in the current batch of data. PPO ensures that the updates don't destabilize the learning process by using constraints on the gradient the numerical model changes. Iterate and improve. The RLHF process can be further enhanced by iteratively updating the reward model and policy together. As the policy updates, users can continue ranking the outputs, leading to complex dynamics between the policy and reward model evolution. By iterating through the RM loop and applying PPO optimization, the language model can gradually improve its performance, becoming better at understanding user inputs and providing more accurate, relevant, and useful responses. This process helps to create more advanced and user-friendly AI systems 
that can effectively assist users in various tasks and applications. Section 3, RLHF, Token by Token Training Unleashed. What makes RLHF so powerful? By combining reinforcement learning with generative GPT-based architectures, every token is subject to log probability estimation, meaning human feedback trains the neural network at every single token. Imagine you're listening critically to a speaker hanging on every single word uttered. One single wrong word can cause a total disconnect with the speaker and the message. This is an experience all humans have listening to a speech, and now RLHF has recreated it. Every word matters. That's the level of precision RLHF brings to the table. We believe it holds incredible potential with fine-grained token-by-token training. Putting OpenAI's ChatGPT to the test. We wanted to see how ChatGPT would fare against our model ensemble, so we put it to the test. We crafted a user prompt to get ChatGPT to generate financial analysis, and the results were quite impressive. Specifically, we wanted the model to immediately give us a classification grade score and a confidence level from 0 to 1. After a little bit of prompt engineering, we were able to mostly get the output to conform. We extracted the grade and confidence score using a regex. We noticed Sometimes the API would be overloaded, and another technical issue was the total amount of tokens for an API call was limited to 4,097 tokens for the GPT 3.5 Turbo model we tested against. Let us know if you want more details on the technical points or prompt, and we'd be happy to share. Here are a few of the qualitative results, outputs from one of the better GPT models. I believe the first one is under the symbol MKTX. Grade B. Confidence 0.8. Market Access Holdings Inc. has a strong business model with a leading electronic platform in fixed income markets. The company has consistently paid dividends and has authorized multiple share repurchase programs. However, the lack of information on intrinsic value metrics such as free cash flow yield and profit margin makes it difficult to give a higher grade. Grade C. Confidence 0.6. The company's financial filings show mixed results across its segments. While the security services and market and wealth services segments have strong revenue and pre-tax operating margins, the investment and wealth management segment has a low pre-tax operating margin. Additionally, the company's pension and healthcare benefit obligations are significant and may impact future cash flows. However, the company's overall financial position is stable with consistent revenue and net interest revenue. Those are some pretty impressive samples. I would normally expect the phrase net interest income rather than revenue. A battle of machine learning. How did we evaluate ChatGPT? We plugged it into our evaluation framework, which uses a train validation test structure that's essential in machine learning. This ensures that our model performs well on unseen data and controls against cheating and overfitting. And we discovered that ChatGPT's potential varies wildly with one critical parameter, the temperature, which affects the output randomness. Experts in machine learning can skip the next section, but it's worth reiterating. The train, validation, and test structure is a crucial approach in developing effective machine learning models. It involves splitting the data set. This structure is effective for three main reasons. Preventing overfitting. Using separate data sets for training and evaluation minimizes the risk of overfitting. The model is trained on the training set and evaluated on the validation set, ensuring it performs well on unseen data. Model selection and hyperparameter tuning. The validation set allows for the comparison of different models and tuning of hyperparameters, helping to find the best model configuration without influencing the final evaluation on the test set. 3. Unbiased Performance Estimation The test set provides an independent assessment of the model's performance on unseen data, ensuring that the evaluation is not biased by decisions made during the training and hyperparameter tuning. In our case, we have over 500 companies, meaning 450 techs for training, 50 for validation, and 50 for testing. Normally, we train the model using the 450 Samples, evaluate and tune the model with the validation set, and finally, assess the model's performance using the 50 sample test set. 
This approach ensures the model is less likely to overfit and provides a reliable estimation of its performance on new unseen data. For our in-house model, which is at the product level, we've optimized and frozen the model hyperparameters and used the validation set only for model selection. In our comparison, we're comparing the test set performance of our model versus GPT 3.5 Turbo. And we discovered that the key to unlocking ChatGPT's potential lies in one critical parameter, the temperature. The temperature test results revealed. The temperature appears incredibly important for text generation. In OpenAI's own words, what sampling temperature to use between 0 and 2? Higher values like 0 0.8 will make the output more random, while lower values like 0 0.2 will make it more focused and deterministic. For instance, when we set the temperature to less than 0 0.2, the ratings experience mode collapse, where they would only issue the same rating, letter grade C, to all companies. We swept the temperature parameter from 0 to 1 and plotted the Matthews Correlation Coefficient, MCC, and accuracy of the test results. The MCC is a particularly important metric. MCC is a statistical metric used to measure the quality of classification models. It takes into account true positives, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives to provide a single score that indicates how well the model is performing. The MCC value ranges from negative one to plus one, where a value of plus one represents a perfect prediction, zero represents a completely random prediction, and negative one represents complete disagreement between the predicted and actual results. In general, MCC values greater than 0 0.1 are considered to be good while values less than 0 0.1 indicate poor performance. The MCC can be a more informative measure of model performance than traditional metrics like accuracy, which can be misleading if the model is biased towards the majority class. The verdict? Our model ensemble outperformed all GPT experiments here. We have repeated each test for a given temperature three times and plot an error bar for the standard deviation to give an idea of the stability. During the test, we used a whopping 6.35 million tokens across input and completion. Here is the figure summarizing the results. On the horizontal, we have increasing temperature from 0 to 1, meaning more randomness and possibly creativity at higher ends. On the vertical, we have the MCC and ACC values. We can see that they have a rough correlation. A higher MCC will naturally have a higher accuracy we'd expect a MCC of zero to be equivalent to random chance, which would imply an accuracy of 20% for quintiles. On the chart, we can find the best GPT temperature setting was 0 0.6, which gave 25% accuracy or 5% above random chance. The corresponding MCC value was 0 0.026. We can compare to an amicus model, which had 39.1% accuracy or 57% ac greater accuracy than the best GPT model. What's not shown on the chart is our ensemble, which has an MCC value on the order of 0 0.23, which is a step function above the MCC values from GPT, at least 874% higher. Having a higher MCC value implies a much better grasp of concepts across all types of businesses. We're linking to a video on MOE, a crucial technique we use to make sure the right tool is used for the situation. The saying goes, if you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. We avoid the mode collapse groupthink trap. Inside our model ensemble, our secret weapon, our model ensemble consists of an NLU model for 27 intrinsic value metrics, along with a mixture of experts approach, MOE, to dynamically activate the best model combination per input. If you're new here, be sure to check out our intro video where we overview the approach. Generative AI, a promising future. Despite not outperforming our ensemble, generative AI still has us excited. ChatGPT showcased amazing explainability and even generated confidence levels for its predictions. While we didn't analyze those confidence levels, we see huge potential for future applications. Further, we required the model to give a short explanation of their rating. The better models had impressive thought-provoking analysis. At the very least, the AI explanations are good for brainstorming and out-of-the-box thinking. ChatGPT versus our models, limitations, and future prospects. 
It's important to note that we were limited to 4,097 tokens for the GPT 3.5 Turbo, a close cousin of ChatGPT. While our models read up to the required 200,000 tokens per company, we also didn't use the more advanced GPT-4, which supports longer contacts up to 32,000 tokens, but at a much higher inference cost and time. GPT has a natural user interface, and RLHS HF has an even more exciting prospect. We're all in on the RLHF paradigm and are crafting our own dataset. It's a challenge that can't be crowdsourced like OpenAI's approach to chat GPT. The fact is, even 90% of professionals underperform the market. Humans have a tough job with the difficulty of overcoming bias, research, and news that inundate investors. We aim to combine top-level human feedback with RLHF techniques to elevate our models to unprecedented heights in the service of an unbiased quantitative service for investors. And there you have it, our epic showdown between ChatGPT and our model ensemble for investing. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of AI and finance as much as we did. Generative AI and RLHF have the potential to revolutionize how we approach financial analysis and prediction, and we're motivated to see where this journey takes us. If you have any questions or want more information on our methods, don't hesitate to drop a comment below. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe to our channel for more insights into AI and finance. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.